Okay, so everybody, uh, today we talk about the circulation of blood. So in this lecture, we will mainly uh, identify the arteries and veins in the body. Okay. So uh, we'll talk about the arterial system and venous system. In last class, I talked about different types of circulation. You remember systemic circulation, pulmonary circulation, right? Fetal circulation and portal, hepatic portal circulation. And you have also learned the differences between systemic and pulmonary. So today we will mostly you know, identify the arteries and veins in the body. <coughs> Blood vessels include arteries, veins and capillaries. Those are three types of blood vessels in your body. Okay? Now, the difference between an artery and a vein is artery, this is the heart, arteries take the blood away from the heart. Away from the heart. Make sense? And veins move the blood towards the heart. So that is very simple, right? The blood vessels that take the blood away from the heart, those are the arteries. The blood vessels, those take the, bring the blood towards the heart or move the blood towards the heart, those are what? Veins. Is it clear? Okay. So this is what? Artery. Artery. And this is? Vein. Okay. So this is artery. And this is vein. Remember, it doesn't matter what kind of blood is there, oxygenated or deoxygenated, it doesn't matter. Arteries take the blood away from the heart, veins bring the blood towards the heart. <coughs> so, let's uh, use different colors. So, this is an artery, and this is a large artery. And the artery is branch, you know that, right? Make a smaller arteries as they go far away from the heart, they branch, and larger artery gives blood to the smaller arteries. Okay, to the smaller arteries. So this is a large artery. Okay. And the smallest arteries are called the arterioles. So this is an arteriole. Smallest arteries are called the arterioles. Okay? And this is the end of the arterial system. From the end of the arteries, you get the capillaries. So these are the capillaries. Okay? And capillaries form networks. They get connected to each other to form what? Network. And that is called the capillary bed. So this is a capillary bed. Okay? Okay? This part. And from the <coughs> other end of the capillary bed, Venous system starts. So this is the smallest vein that is called venule. Okay? Venule. Small vein. And the small veins give blood to the larger vein. Okay? So this is a larger vein, gets blood from multiple, you know, small veins. And then the largest vein gives the blood to the heart. Okay? 
So this is the venous system taking the blood towards the heart, towards the heart, okay? And this is the arterial system taking the blood away from the heart. Is it clear? Okay. So in case of arteries, large arteries give blood to the what? Smaller arteries. Make sense? In case of veins, smaller veins give blood to the larger veins. Make sense? It's opposite, right? In case of arteries, large arteries give blood to the smaller arteries. In case of venous system, smaller veins give blood to the what? Bigger veins, right? Okay. And arteries take the blood away from the heart, veins bring towards the heart. Now, this is what? Capillary bed, right? Okay. So, what happens here? This is very important. Capillaries are very important. Why? Because oxygen is given to the tissue here. And carbon dioxide from the tissue enters into the capillary. So here you see oxygen is getting out from the blood, going to the tissue, and carbon dioxide is from the tissue to the blood. Is it clear? So blood is giving oxygen to the tissue and getting carbon dioxide from the tissue. Now you tell me, this blood is losing oxygen but getting what? CO2, carbon dioxide, right? So blood will become deoxygenated. Make sense? So that deoxygenated blood will enter into the venous system. Is it clear? So deoxygenated blood should go where? To the which side of the heart? Anybody? Right side of the heart. Remember that? Deoxygenated in the right side of the heart. So you see here, right atrium receives the deoxygenated blood. Okay. Make sense? So uh, that's how the arteries, capillaries, and veins work. Now, if you see the structure of the arteries, we divide or classify the arteries into three types. The largest arteries are called elastic or conductive arteries. Medium sized arteries are called muscular or distributing arteries. And smallest arteries I already mentioned here are called arterioles. Okay? So the smallest ones are arterioles. So if this is the largest artery, this is elastic or conducting. Conducting. Make sense? Because this is the large artery. Then you see it branches. So this is muscular or distributing artery. Distributing artery. And the smallest one is the artery. Okay? So one, two, three. Three types of arteries. Okay? <coughs> Muscular, uh, sorry, elastic arteries have more elastic fibers in the wall. That's why they are called elastic arteries. Make sense? So, see here, why large arteries are elastic arteries? Very good. So, you know that ventricle pumps, right? Ventricle contracts forcefully, blood enters into the arteries, right? So, the arteries, large arteries are getting blood from the heart. So, when heart contracts forcefully, a lot of blood suddenly gets out, right? Pushed out. So those elastic arteries can do what? Can expand. Does it make sense? If elastic arteries are not there,
then some blood will be pushed back. Make sense? But since the elastic arteries can expand, right, they can take the blood, more blood into it. Okay, so that is why largest or large arteries are elastic arteries. They can expand. Muscular arteries are also called distributing arteries. Why? Because, you see, these arteries go to the organs. For example, this is your kidney. So, this one, muscular artery, takes the blood from the elastic artery and gives to different organs. Like here, you have stomach or liver. Okay? So, it will get blood from the distributing arteries. They are distributing the blood to different organs of the body. Okay? And arterioles are the smallest ones and from the end of the arteriole, you get the capillary bed. Okay? So, there are three types of arteries. <clears throat> now, if you see the wall of an artery, this is elastic. So, you have more elastic fibers in the wall. Makes sense. This is muscular. So, you have more muscle fibers here, right? Less elastic fibers. Okay. Now, here you see the amount of different types of tissue. Since this is elastic, you see the amount of elastic is high here compared, compared to the muscular. Blue one is showing amount of elastic tissue. Make sense? So, elastic tissue is more in elastic artery than the muscular. Is it clear? Now, let us see the muscular tissue or muscle tissue, smooth muscle is more in muscular artery. Make sense? Okay? And <coughs> veins, I told you uh, that venules are the small veins and if you see the wall, it is much thinner than the wall of the artery. So, the wall of the vein is thinner than the artery. Okay? And this is a large vein. Now, look at this and let us go to see the large artery. Okay? If you see the differences, uh, second, No, I am going to tell you the differences, okay? So, just see those two pictures. In case of vein, you will see that the wall is thin, thin wall, okay? So, this is a vein. If you see an artery, like same sized artery, the wall is what? Take it. Okay. So, if the wall is thin, the size of the lumen is bigger. Make sense? Size of the lumen is, lumen is what? Larger in vein because the wall is thick. In case of artery, since the wall is thick, the lumen is what? Small. In case of vein, since the wall is thin, when the vein has low pressure, low, less blood, it will easily get what? Flat, right? It will easily get flat because the wall is thin. Like think a thin, you know, walled rubber tube, and a thick walled rubber tube. Make sense? Thin one will easily get flat, right? But thin wall, walled one will stay round. Is it clear? So this one gets flat when the pressure is low, but this one always remains round because the wall is thick. Even the pressure goes down, it still will remain open and round. Make sense? The wall is thick. Okay. Another thing.
thing, um, just know that always pressure inside the artery is high. Pressure of blood is high inside the artery. Pressure of blood is low inside the vein. Why the pressure inside the artery is high, inside the vein is low? You remember I showed you this is the artery, right? And arterial, then capillary vein, then the vein, right? This is the venule, and then the vein here. And this goes to the artery. So, you see, when the Ventricle contracts, blood enters first into the arterial system, right? Mm -hmm. And circulates inside the arterial system first, right? And when it arrives here, the pressure is already much lower than here. Make sense? Because it travels, already traveled a lot. Make sense? Uh, so the pressure is already low here. But now you see here, the blood goes through the capillary beds. Everywhere in your body, you have capillary beds, right? And when the blood passes through the capillary beds, it gets much slower. Pressure goes down a lot. Make sense? So when it enters here, pressure is already very low. Make sense? Because the distance, right? And it's going through, uh, no, small capillaries, right? Small arteries. So, the pressure gradually goes what? Down. Okay? Uh, as the blood goes away from the heart, the pressure drops. Gradually goes down. Okay? So, that's why inside the vein, the pressure is much lower than inside the artery. Here, you see the same thing I showed you, okay? This is the capillary bed, venue, and vein. We talked about systemic and pulmonary circulations in last class. Now, we'll see the arteries, major arteries in the body, okay? So this is the arterial system. Okay, so let's start from the heart. This is the heart, okay? This is the left ventricle. And this is the aorta. You have already seen aorta, right? Did you? In the heart model? Did it see? Aorta? Okay. This is the diaphragm. You know diaphragm is just part of the heart. Okay, diaphragm. So heart is sitting on the diaphragm. You already know that. When the left ventricle contracts very strongly, the blood enters into the aorta. Okay? Blood enters into what? The aorta. The aorta has three parts. This part is called the ascending aorta. Ascending. Make sense? Going up, blood is going up. Okay. Then you see an arch, like St. Louis arch, right? Like an arch. So this is called aortic arch. Okay. Or arch of the aorta. So that is another part. And then Descending aorta. D 
descending aorta. Okay. So aorta has how many parts? I said three. Three. This is ascending, then arch, then what? Descending. Descending. Descending is very long. It's not done yet. Descending pierces, passes through the diaphragm and enters into the abdominal cavity. So your diaphragm is here, right? You know above the diaphragm is thoracic cavity. Below the diaphragm is what? Abdominal cavity, right? So it enters into the abdominal cavity. So the whole thing is descending aorta. So now diaphragm separates the descending aorta into two parts. This part is called, this part is called thoracic because it is in the thorax, aorta, and this part is called what? Abdominal aorta. Very good. So descending is divided by the diaphragm, right? And above the diaphragm is thoracic aorta, below the diaphragm is abdominal aorta. Is it clear? Okay. Now let's see which important branches we get from the aorta. First, from ascending aorta, we get two very important arteries, remember. Two very important arteries. Why they are very important? Because they go to the wall of the heart. Which arteries? What do you think? Go to the wall of the heart. Coronary, right and left. Remember that? So, right and left coronary arteries arise from the ascending aorta. Okay? So, very important. Coronary arteries are the branches of the ascending aorta. Go to the heart. Aortic arch. From the aortic arch, you get three arteries. How many? From right to left, if you go, this is called brachiocephalic trunk. I am not writing the whole thing. First one, the rightmost one is called what? Brachiocephalic trunk. Is it clear? Then, left, common carotid. So this is called Middle one is called left common carotid artery. Okay? And this one is called left sub what? Clavian artery. Make sense? So those three arise from what? The aorta, the uh, uh, aortic arch. Right? Brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, left what? Subclavian. Is it clear? Okay. So now you see something here. You got left common carotid, left subclavian, right? So where are the right common carotid, right subclavian? That's the question, right? Mm -hmm. So right common carotid and right subclavian don't arise from the aortic arch, but they are the branches of brachiocephalic trunk. So you see brachiocephalic trunk, it is short, that's why it is called trunk divides into right common carotid and right subclavian. Is that the one in the middle that it has branches? Because the first one we said is uh, the name is brachiocephalic trunk. Yeah, this is the brachiocephalic trunk. Uh -huh. It divides into oh, okay. it's, uh, right common carotid and what? Right? Subclavian. Now makes sense, right? You see, you have left subclavian, left common carotid, right? Coming directly from the aortic arch. 
and now we got right subclavian, right common cavity. Is it clear? Right common cavity, right subclavian. Mm -hmm. So you got two subclavians, right and left. Okay. You got two common cavities, right and left. Now it makes sense, right? You have equal number of common cavities and subclavian. Is it clear? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> now let's talk about we'll talk about we'll go back here later I'll ask you so this is the thoracic okay, thoracic aorta from the thoracic aorta we get a number of arteries those are called intercostal these are all these are intercostal arteries. So these are the main branches of the thoracic aorta. Now you tell me, intercostal means what? It's between the ribs. So remember I said intercostal spaces. Heart is located between second and fifth. Remember that? Okay. So, your thoracic aorta is here. From the thoracic aorta, the branches go where? In between the ribs. Make sense? That's why those are called intercostal arteries. Okay? Good. And another important one pair, they go to the diaphragm. Diaphragm needs blood, right? All tissues need blood. So these are going to the diaphragm. And remember, when you hear the term phrenic, that indicates diaphragm. So these are coming from above, these two, and these are called superior. Superior means above. Phrenic means diaphragm. So how many superior phrenic arteries? Two. Two. One pair. Make sense? Go to the where? Diaphragm. Okay? Is it clear? Okay. Now, abdominal aorta gives a number of branches. Some are paired branches, some are single, unpaired. Okay? So from the abdominal aorta, you get paired and unpaired arteries. Two arteries go to your kidneys. How many kidneys do you have? Two. You need two arteries, right? One should go to the right, another should go to the left. Make sense? So renal arteries are paired arteries. Make sense? So those organs you have two. You need two arteries. Make sense? So like kidneys. This is one kidney. This is another kidney. So from the abdominal aorta, arteries go to the kidneys. Those are called what? Renal. renal. Make sense? Arteries, two. On the top of the kidney, which gland you have, anybody? All of you should know. Adrenal, Adrenal or suprarenal gland. Remember that? Yeah. Okay, same thing. So, how many? Two. two. So you have two suprarenal arteries. Supra renal or adrenal gland. Artery. Okay. Make sense? To supply the adrenal gland or suprarenal gland. This is your liver. How many liver you have? One? Liver is only one, right? Okay. So, hepatic artery goes to the Liver. Does it make sense? Yeah. Hepatic means liver, right? You know that. Hepatic failure, right? Liver failure. 
So, since only one liver arrives, so one hepatic artery goes to the liver. <coughs> How many gonads you have? Two. Testis or ovaries, right? Yeah. Two. So, like testis or ovaries, these are gonadal arteries. Make sense? Go to the gonads. Female gonads are ovaries, right? And male gonads are testis. Okay. From the front of the abdominal aorta, three arteries arise. These are important, okay? This one is called the celiac trunk. So, topmost one, uppermost one is called the celiac trunk. Then this one is called superior mesenteric. Superior mesenteric artery. And lower one is called inferior mesenteric artery. Okay, now <coughs> let's get a pause and go back and revise, okay? So this is what? This is what? <laughs> okay. And which, which chamber is this? <laughs> left ventricle. When left ventricle pumps the blood, right? The blood enters into the? Aorta. Aorta has first part is called ACP. Then the middle part? R. And longest part? Descending. Which is separated by? Diaphragm. Above the diaphragm, this part is called? And below the diaphragm? Make sense? Okay. Good. Now, two very important arteries arise from the ascending, go to the wall of the heart. Those are coronary. coronary, right and left, right? Very important. Then from the arch, how many? Three. Three. Brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid, left subclavian. So you have left common carotid, left subclavian, right? You need right common carotid, right subclavian. So those come from this one. Brachiocephalic trunk divides into right common carotid, right subclavian. Is it clear? Okay, then thoracic aorta gives paired branches, they go to the intercostal spaces, make sense? So those are called intercostal arteries in between the ribs and one pair of arteries go to the diaphragm from above, that's why they are called superior phrenic, phrenic indicates diaphragm, okay? Now let's go to the abdominal aorta, okay? Two arteries go to the kidneys, those are called? Renal. Renal. Two arteries go to the adrenal gland or suprarenal gland, those are called? Suprarenal arteries, make sense? Those are paired, right? Two, two. Two arteries go to the gonads, called the gonadal arteries, make sense? One artery go, goes to the liver, hepatic, liver, hepatic, make sense? Okay. <coughs> then, from the front of the abdominal aorta, ciliac trunk, superior mesenteric, inferior mesenteric, make sense? Okay. So, ciliac trunk, this one, trunk is short, remember, when we use the term trunk, like here, trunk is short, then divides. So celiac trunk is also short and divides into three branches. Okay. One is called gastric 
So celiac tract. Actually, I'll, I'll go back here uh, to correct something. So celiac tract, just know that celiac tract divides into three. Okay? One goes to the stomach, that is called gastric artery. Makes sense. Gastric means stomach. Another goes to the spleen. That is called the splenic. And I uh, said something wrong here. Hepatic doesn't come directly from the abdominal aorta. Hepatic is actually a branch of celiac tract. So the third branch is hepatic artery. It doesn't come directly from the aorta. It is a branch of the cilia. So celiac tract has three branches. Gastric goes to the stomach. Splenic go to the, goes to the spleen and hepatic goes to the liver. Okay? These are three branches of celiac trunk. Okay? Good. Now, uh, the lower end of the abdominal aorta divides into two large arteries. Lower end of the abdominal aorta divides into two large arteries. Okay. Uh, before that, so celiac tract gives three branches: gastric to the stomach, splenic to the spleen, hepatic to the liver. Now, how about superior mesenteric and inferior mesenteric? Superior mesenteric mostly goes to the small intestine upper part of intestine and inferior mesenteric mostly gives blood to the large intestine this is important okay makes sense because small intestine is the upper part of the intestine large intestine is the lower part of the intestine so two mesenteric are for the intestine upper one superior for the small and inferior for the large intestine. There is a little bit overlap, but that's fine. Okay, so now the lower end of the abdominal aorta divides into two. These are called common iliac. Common iliac arteries. So how many common iliac? How many common iliac? Two. two. Lower end of the abdominal aorta divides into two common ilia. Remember, when you will hear the term common in arterial system, common divides into two, external, internal. Okay? So that will help you. So this is right common iliac, right common iliac, this is left common iliac. Okay? Left common iliac and common iliac divides into two here this one also divides into two okay so one goes to the leg to the thigh that is called the femoral makes sense right femoral area so femoral artery femur is here the bone femur so that is one Branch. And that becomes femoral artery. Okay, and this one stays in this area. Okay, that is the internal area. Before it becomes femoral, actually, it first part is called. Let me explain this. This is common ilia divides into external and internal. So this is external ilia, and then it becomes femoral. Okay. goes to the thigh. Okay. This is also external iliac and this is internal iliac. So you get two internal iliacs, two external iliacs. Okay. And external goes to the leg. Internal stays in the pelvic area here to supply blood to the pelvic organs. I'll repeat again. Okay. So just internal stays here, external goes to the leg. Okay. So let's again 
go over. So, uh, this is celiac trunk. Celiac trunk divides into how many? Two. Three. Three. Oh, okay. One goes to the Liver. stomach. That is called gastric, right? One goes to the Liver. Liver. That is hepatic. And another one? Spleen. And this side is quiet. Okay. So, hello. Celiac trunk. How many branches? Three. What are those? Um, gastric, uh, haptic, yeah. <laughs> splitting, yeah. right? Splitting. Yeah. So gastric goes to the gastric. Uh, uh, we always hear gastric, right? Gastric means what? Stomach. Stomach, right? Hepatic means what? I said hepatic failure. Yeah. What is that? Liver. Liver, right? Liver, right? And splitting goes to the? Yes, in spleen. Spleen. Yeah. Okay. So you passed, but you need to <laughs> listen carefully, okay? Yeah. Okay. So three. Very good. So three organs get blood from the ciliar trunk. Then superior mesentery supplies blood mostly to the? Right. Small intestine, right? which is the upper part of the intestine. And inferior mesenteric supplies to the? Large intestine. Large intestine. Make sense? And then lower end of the abdominal aorta divides into two common what? Iliac. iliac. Okay? This area is called the iliac area. You know? The ilium is the part of the bone here. Okay? Iliac area. So, two common. And I told you that if you hear common, that means it will divide into two, right? External and internal. internal. So, this is right common iliac, will divide into right external iliac, right internal iliac. Okay? This is left common iliac, so divides into left internal iliac and left external iliac. Internal iliac is much smaller than external and it stays in which area? Pelvic area, okay? Supplies blood to the pelvic organs like uterus or urinary bladder. This means the external iliac is the, the extension of the external iliac is the femora. Yeah, external iliac goes to the leg, right? Mm -hmm. So this area is called the femoral area. So when the blood you know, artery uh, passes through this area, that is called femoral artery. Make sense? Okay, so you see here, this is the lower end of the abdominal aorta, so divides into two common, and then you see, this small one is internal iliac, and this big one is external, right? And big one is long, goes to the thigh, becomes femoral artery, make sense? This is femoral artery, okay? And then, goes to the back of the knee. Which area is this? Popliteal area, remember that? So, now the name is what? Popliteal artery. And then, it divides into tibial fibula. Tibial becomes anterior, posterior, and one fibula. So, we will see that later. Just see here, anterior tibial, in front of the tibia, posterior tibial, behind the tibia. Make sense? And one fibula. You have two bones in the leg, right? In the leg, tibia and fibula. So those arteries are named after the bones, right? This one is what? Femoral. You have femur here. And here you have tibia and fibula. So tibial and fibula. Tibial how many? Two. Front of the tibia is anterior. Behind the tibia is posterior. And fibula is one. Okay? So those are the main arteries there. <coughs> okay, so now we are not done yet, okay? <laughs> Let's talk about this. You guys help me, okay?
So three arteries from the aortic arch. This one is what? Very good. Brachiocephalic trunk. It is short. That's why trunk. And this one is left. Common carotid. And this is left. So glad here. Okay. And brachiocephalic trunk divides into two. Right. Common carotid. Right. Subclavian. Make sense? So you have one pair of common carotid, one pair of subclavian. Okay? Now, subclavian. This is left subclavian, this is right subclavian. Subclavian, its name is telling you. It goes under the clavicle. Here. Make sense? So, two branches, one will go.